Whether you have just bought your first Apple Watch or are upgrading from an older generation, this is the video for you. Today, I will cover everything you need to know from using the watch along with some neat tips and tricks to going through the essential settings to change to optimize performance and battery life. And finally, a look at some of the top apps and features of the Apple Watch. Now, I'll be demonstrating this on my Apple Watch SE2. However, this also applies to the previous SE1 as well as the Apple Watch Series 6, 7 and 8. As always, I will leave all the purchase links down in the description. But before we start, I am giving away this brand new iPhone 14. If you guys want a chance to win, be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video and comment your favorite feature of the Apple Watch along with your Instagram username. And then follow me on Instagram where I will announce the winner on November the 27th. All right, so to start, let's take a look at the watch face. Now to quickly switch between and cycle between your watch faces, simply swipe from the left or right side of the display. And this will allow you to quickly switch between uh, any watch faces that you have set up previously. But let's go ahead and add a new watch face. Now this is something you can do directly on the Apple Watch as well as on your iPhone. Now to do this on the Apple Watch, we're gonna press and hold on the watch face. And then this will bring up this secondary menu in which we're gonna swipe all the way to the right until we see this little plus icon. Go ahead and tap that. And this will then bring up a new menu where we can choose a watch face to add. Now, as you can see, there's quite a long list of watch faces to add here. So Apple have created some subfolders. Uh, here you can see we have specifically the new watch faces, including my favorite, which is the Metropolitan watch face. So let's go ahead and tap add to add that watch face. And now we're gonna be customizing the watch face. So this is gonna be broken down into different sections. You can see we have style, dial, and color. Uh, and I'm gonna quickly take you through each of these to show you what kind of options there are. So first, what we can do is we can use the digital crown to swipe through the different options. Now here in this first setting here in style, you can see we can uh, choose how many of the numerals we want shown. So let's say I want them shown for every hour, and then we'll go ahead and swipe to the dial, and this will bring us to the uh, next section to customize. And this will allow us to sort of choose the color palette for the dial. So we can see whether we want a bright dial uh, and a dark backdrop or a dark backdrop and a dark dial. I kind of like this combo the most. So let's go ahead and swipe right here one more time to color. And then we'll go ahead and swipe through. And then this will allow us to choose the color of the dial. So uh, let's say, let's swipe up a little bit here. This is kind of a nice color, sea salt, very interesting. Uh, so once we're happy with that, we will swipe to the right. And this brings us to complications. Now complications are a feature that I really enjoy on the Apple Watch as it allows you to quickly access uh, system functions or see data at a glance. And this will be uh, taken up by four little spaces in the corners of the watch face. And you can actually customize each of these. So let's say here on the bottom, we'll go ahead and uh, tap on this option here. And then we can add a complication that we like. Now, as you can see, we have a broad range to choose from. Uh, again, from shortcuts to different apps to uh, other information such as weather. Uh, you can have your activity, for example. I think that's what we have here now. Yeah, so that's your activity. So that means that whenever you look at your watch face, this data will be refreshed and up to date. And it will, in this case, show you your uh, activity, showing you how much you have walked, uh, stood, or uh, worked out during that day. And then another example here is on the top right where we have the weather complication, uh, which will show you the current temperature as well as the high and low. So really useful information uh, that again, will always be visible as it is right there on the watch face. Uh, and let's say we can go ahead and customize this as well. So here we have the UV index. Uh, let's go in and change that to a shortcut to the workout app. Now this means whenever we press the top left of the display, it will open up the workout app uh, and allow us to start a workout. Now, complications on the Apple Watch are really useful, as again, they allow you to access system functions or apps on the Apple Watch instantly, uh, and also give you information at a glance. But one word of caution uh, is that because these do run in the background and constantly update, they are essentially small apps. And what this means is that they will take battery over time. So my suggestion is only use complications that you really find useful uh, and ones that actually benefit your experience with the Apple Watch, as otherwise they'll just be taking up battery in the background for no reason. But we'll take a look at more battery tips as we go. And then once you're happy with the new watch face, we're gonna go ahead and press in on the digital crown. And as you can see, our new watch face is now in our menu and we can go ahead and tap into it to have it on the watch face. And uh, this looks really great, very clean, minimalistic, uh, just how I like my Apple watch to be. And as you can see, just as easily as before, we can just swipe to the left or right to cycle back through our watch faces. 
So an essential part of using the Apple Watch uh, is gestures. So let's take a look at some of the essential gestures for the Apple Watch. First, simply swipe down from the top of the display to see your notification shade. Now they're gonna be grouped by app and you can simply scroll through them uh, using your finger as well as the digital crown. Now to dismiss this screen, we're gonna swipe up from the bottom of the display and that will bring us back to the watch face. Now if we swipe up again from the bottom of the display, this will bring up control center. Now this will look very similar uh, or maybe familiar uh, as you also have this on the iPhone and this will give you quick access to many of the features right on the Apple Watch. You can also see your battery percentage here and if we actually tap into this menu, uh, this will also allow us to toggle low power mode. Now low power mode is a new feature uh, that was brought with watchOS 9 and what this will do is it will turn off non-essential um, features running in the background to allow for up to 36 hours of use. This is something uh, I've not had to use so far as my Apple Watch can easily last me all day. Uh, but for example, on days of travel, this would be useful to have. Other useful toggles are, for example, the ability to quickly turn on and off your Wi-Fi, uh, as well as being able to ping your phone. I'm going to show you how this works. Simply tap this, and as you can see, my phone will be pinging here in the background and this will make it great if, for example, ever you uh, lose your phone, you can quickly find it. Believe me, uh, this is something that I've had to use more than I care to share in this video. Uh, next, of course, we also have the ability to turn on your silent mode. Now, I personally like to use my watch uh, in silent mode at all times as the haptic feedback on the Apple Watch is really great, uh, but you can also toggle this quickly on and off here. And we also have the option to turn on the flashlight. Now I think this is a really underrated feature of the Apple Watch uh, as it quickly allows you to, for example, find your keys or something. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's not gonna fill a whole room, uh, but for say you're looking for something in your bag or in a dark corner of your home, uh, this can be really useful. You can also swipe through different options, maybe a flashing option as well as a red option as well. And to exit out of it, simply press the digital crown to return to the home screen. And now to access the home screen, what we're gonna do is press the digital crown and this will give us a grid view of all of our installed apps uh, on the Apple Watch. And to return to the watch face, we can either press the digital crown again and that will bring us back to the watch face or we can press this center icon here, which will also bring us back to the time. Now that we've looked at how to use the Apple Watch, let me show you how to set up your Apple Watch to maximize the battery life uh, performance as well as features. So first we have the settings app right on the Apple Watch. We're gonna go back to the home screen uh, and then we'll swipe over to this little gear icon here. And this will bring us to an excellent built-in settings app right on the Apple Watch. This is a great way to uh, quickly change a few different settings right on the go on your watch. However, today we are diving deep. So instead, I'm gonna show you the watch app on the iPhone as this will give you more options uh, and give you full control over your Apple Watch. On your iPhone, you're gonna to wanna to look for the watch app and that's the Apple Watch app right here in the top left of the display. Uh, once you found that, we're gonna go ahead and tap into it and this will give us full control over our Apple Watch, uh, not just our settings, but we can also add and change the watch face from here. Uh, great to be able to do this uh, on the phone as well as on the Apple Watch. Sometimes changing settings in particular uh, is more useful on the iPhone as you just get that larger display uh, and in this case, also more options to choose from. So let me go ahead and uh, first show you how to add a watch face. Now, very simply, uh, let's go ahead and add a uh, astronomy one here, go and tap into the watch face. And just like on the Apple Watch, we could customize it. So we have all the different sections here. Uh, we get a clear overview, but just to keep things simple, we're gonna keep it as is. And we'll go ahead and select add in the uh, top here. And then if we go back to our watch in the bottom left corner, we can swipe through all of our watch faces. So as you can see, this also includes the one we just created. And this is the one that we just added there. And if we want to add it as a new watch face, we can simply press and hold on that watch face and select set as watch face uh, or remove it like so as well. But now let's get to what matters most and that are some of these settings. So starting off here on the top, we're gonna to go through notifications. Now receiving notifications on the Apple Watch uh, is one of my favorite features and I really enjoy getting my notifications right on the wrist. Uh, but crucially, I only allow important notifications to come through. As if I were to allow all of my notifications to come in, uh, it would get a bit much as my wrist will be going off all day. So instead, what I suggest you do is go through your different apps and manually select which apps you want to allow or disallow notifications to come in from. 
Now, one of my suggestions uh, would be to allow notifications from messaging apps, say from loved ones or family, colleagues, uh, but then rather, for example, shopping apps or uh, games. They don't have to send you notifications and definitely not to your watch. So quickly turn those off here, right in the notification settings on your iPhone. Trust me, limiting notifications on your Apple Watch is not just good for your well-being as it won't have your watch going off all day. Uh, it is also good for your battery life as it will mean the uh, screen, the haptic engine or the speaker will be activated less. So once you've narrowed down your notifications, we're gonna go, ba uh, go back here and select general. And this will then give us uh, a few different options. So first, I definitely suggest you turn on uh, automatic updates in the software update section. So go ahead and turn that on. Uh, this means your Apple Watch will always be up to date in terms of the latest security uh, features, as well as of course the latest watchOS features. Uh, you always want these. So this is a great way to have them uh, always on time. And then what we can also change here is the watch orientation. Now, some of you may notice that I actually wear my Apple Watch on my right wrist, and that's because I'm left-handed. So if you are left-handed, uh, then you can go ahead and change your uh, orientation as well as the placement of the digital crown here. And then similarly to notifications, uh, I definitely suggest you go through your background app refresh, as just like with notifications, you wanna turn this off for apps that don't need it, as the more apps you have constantly running in the background, the more battery is gonna be used to them. So for example, I turn this off for any apps that I don't really use, uh, the Compass, for example, audiobooks or the App Store, uh, but then other more important apps, say your heart rate, uh, maps, for example, or messaging apps, I like to turn on but other ones I just turn off, as again, is just gonna be taking battery and well, they don't need to be running in the background. Some features I definitely suggest you turn on are bedside mode and enable screenshots. Now, bedside mode will switch your uh, Apple Watch display to showing the time in a sort of green, uh, more dimly lit way. Uh, this is a great way to quickly check the time throughout the night without seeing uh, your notifications or getting distracted just only showing you the time and your battery percentage. Now this will automatically activate when your watch is on charge and then deactivate when you take it off. Uh, and beneath that, we have the option to enable screenshots. Now to take a screenshot on the Apple Watch, you wanna press uh, at the same time the side button as well as the digital crown. And then screenshots will all be stored and accessible right on your iPhone in your Photos app. And then finally here at the bottom of the list, we have the storage tab. Now this is a great way to of course see what's taking up storage on your Apple Watch uh, here in chronological order. And you can see how much available storage you have. So as you can see, I have quite a lot available here uh, and I, I don't really use much. Somehow notifications is taking up quite a lot, uh, but I do use that all the time. And then next, we're gonna look at the display and brightness tab. There's a few really essential things here. Now, first of all, I suggest you keep your display brightness right at the middle point, as this is a great way to get the best of both, where it will dim the display low enough. Uh, you say you are in a darker environment, for example, late at night, but it will still get bright enough uh, in the sunlight to make sure your watch is always visible. I found the auto brightness to really be excellent on the Apple Watch, so keeping it in the middle uh, kind of gives you the best of both. Now for this video, I have turned it up to max so you guys can see the screen uh, more clearly. But again, normally I would suggest keeping this low. Uh, and beneath that, we have the text size option. Now as default, it's gonna be one option to the left. And this is really uh, also a balancing act where of course, the larger the text on the display, the more easily it will be uh, to read. But at the same time, it will also be able to show less text at a time. So you wanna kind of find the right balance here. Uh, I find this to be a great balance, allowing me to still read messages on my watch uh, without having to scroll so much that it only shows you know, a couple of words at a time on the screen. So I find that to be the right midpoint. Beneath that are a few essential options. Uh, so we have the wake on wrist raise. So this basically means uh, if you flick your wrist, it will automatically wake up the watch display. Now, if you are on the Apple Watch SE, I definitely suggest turning this on as if you have this off, it means you would have to tap the display to see the time. Now, turning this off will save a bit of battery, uh, but there are some features that I think are just essential to keep on. And this is definitely one of them, especially on the SE, since it doesn't have that always on display uh, as found on the series six, seven, and eight. Beneath that, we also have the option to uh, wake with the digital crown rotate. Uh, this is useful. You can simply rotate the digital, uh, digital crown to dimly light the display. Uh, this is good if you want to check your time uh, in a more subtle way. And then beneath that, we have the wake duration. Now, normally speaking, I suggest keeping this at 15 seconds as the screen won't be running unnecessarily. Again, for the video here, I've turned this on to longer so my display stays on. And this brings me to probably one of, uh, if not the most uh, important features to change on your Apple Watch, 
and that has to do with Siri. Now, Siri on the Apple Watch is great as it allows me to quickly uh, start a timer, get directions or uh, ask a question, create a reminder, things like that. But how you use Siri really affects the battery life uh, and how it works. So first of all, I definitely recommend turning off Hey. Now, I'm not gonna say the full phrase to not activate your series, uh, but this is a nice feature to have because of course it does allow you to quickly uh, activate Siri without uh, having to press any buttons or anything. But at the same time, this means it will be constantly listening out for that activation phrase. And as a result, the mic will be running always and it will take a lot of battery. I would say this feature alone, turning this on and off, can save or take around 20% of your battery life each day. So what I suggest doing is using the digital crown to activate Siri. And this is simply press and holding the digital crown for a second or two, and this will bring up Siri and allow you to then speak. So it will only activate the microphones and Siri once you turn that, or once you press that digital crown. This brings us to sound and haptics. Now, earlier on in the video, uh, I mentioned that I like to have my watch on silent mode, as I find this to be uh, really great, as the haptic feedback on the Apple Watch is so prominent uh, that you will still feel the notifications coming in on your wrist, sort of like a gentle tap. Uh, but then at the same time, you won't disrupt anyone around you. If say you are working in a shared office space, uh, colleagues around you, then they won't hear your notifications, but you will still feel them. So generally speaking, I like to have silent mode on, uh, but here you can still change the volume of the speaker. So for example, uh, with a Siri command, if I speak to someone, uh, if I speak to Siri, uh, it will read back the answer. I can choose how loud I want that to be. Uh, as well as if I'm speaking to someone, say in a call, and I speak through my Apple Watch, I can also choose and change the volume here. Here we can also change how strong we want the haptic feedback uh, to feel. So this is the vibration you feel whenever a notification comes in. So we have the default or even more prominent. Now I found the default to already be strong enough, uh, but I will say if you are, for example, wearing uh, multiple layers or a thick coat or something, you might wanna change this to prominent, uh, but I think for most, the uh, default option will be fine. And then we also have options to turn on and off haptics for different uh, system haptics. So for example, the digital crown, for example, when you're scrolling through menus, you can feel a very slight little tick, uh, as well as when launching uh, specific apps. I like to have these on as it makes the watch feel just a little bit more uh, mechanical. Again, if you are really looking to save battery, you could choose to turn these off, but I think the difference here is minimal uh, and it just adds a nice little uh, quality of life feature. It makes the watch feel, uh, again, just a bit more mechanical uh, and really adds to the overall experience. Importantly, let's go ahead and tap into the passcode setting. Now I suggest you turn on all of these features. First, make sure you do have a passcode set on your Apple Watch, as of course, it's gonna have access to a lot of your personal information, including your messages, contacts, emails. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do use a passcode. Next is the option to unlock it with the iPhone. So this is really useful. Uh, say first thing in the morning, when I put on my Apple Watch, I can just immediately start using my phone. It will detect that I'm using my phone and will then unlock my Apple Watch automatically without me having to type in the password on the display. Secondly is the erase data option. Now, you guys know I love this feature on my iPhone and I always activate it just for peace of mind. The same goes for the Apple Watch. This means if your Apple Watch is ever lost or stolen, someone tries to guess your password, after 10 failed attempts, it will automatically erase itself. At the end of the day, what's most important is your personal data and this ensures it will always be safe. Speaking of safety, this brings us to the emergency SOS section. Now, new with the Apple Watch SE2 and Apple Watch Series 8 is crash detection. Now, crash detection will detect if you're ever in a serious car crash and then will detect if you don't respond to any prompts on the display, in which case it will automatically call emergency services on your behalf. This feature could literally be life-saving, so if your Apple Watch supports it, make sure you turn this on. And the same goes for fall detection. Uh, similarly to crash detection, it will detect if you ever fall, don't respond, and again, call emergency, emergency services without you having to do anything. So both of these features, I definitely suggest you turn on. And next here, we're gonna go into the Activity app. Now, I love the Activity app on my Apple Watch. Uh, in fact, we'll look at this in more detail in a sec. Uh, but first, there are a few settings that I do suggest you turn off. And the first is daily coaching, completion, uh, goal completions, special challenges, and as well as sharing notifications. Uh, don't get me wrong, I find the notifications for certain things to be really uh, helpful. I like the stand reminders. So if say I am working at a desk for an hour or so, uh, it will recommend me to stand for a minute just to kind of get the blood flowing. Uh, but then other times I find it to be a bit excessive, especially the daily coaching notification, uh, which will sort of coach you throughout the day to fill your rings. Uh, I find the numbers on its own to already kind of motivate me enough as I like to just see that graph fill. 
Uh, but for me, I like to turn these off and I suggest you do too as otherwise the notifications can just become a bit much. One of the most impressive features uh, of the Apple Watch is its heart rate features. So it will automatically monitor your heart rate constantly in the background and it will also give you notifications for heart or low heart rate rhythms. Now you can go ahead and also choose to show it notifications for any uh, uh, irregular rhythm detections and you can turn all of these off to again save a little bit of battery but even for someone like me who is generally healthy I like to have these on just because it's reassuring to know that my watch is taking my heart rate uh, in the background and sometimes I find it fascinating to see the data uh, especially during a workout. And lastly, in the settings app here is the noise app. Now, this is one of the uh, new features that was brought with uh, watchOS 8, and this will actually measure your environmental sounds, and it will actually give you an idea uh, for how loud the noise around you is, and will then warn you if the noise gets above a certain threshold. In this case, we have 90 decibels, as this can be damaging to your hearing over time. Again, a useful feature to just have on in the background because when it's necessary, uh, it will give you that notification, in which case you may wanna step away or turn down your volume slightly. Now that we've looked at how to use the watch uh, and set up the essential settings, this brings us to the third part of this guide. Uh, let me show you some of the key apps and features of the Apple Watch. One of the features on the Apple Watch uh, that I probably use almost every day is the now playing screen. So if I go ahead and pull up my iPhone here, I got a song here, go ahead and press play. And then as you can see right on the Apple Watch, it will uh, automatically show this now playing screen. And this will give us the ability to quickly play and pause the music right from the watch. Uh, but even better is it also allows us to change the volume. So what I can do here is simply scroll with the digital crown. And as you can see, I can turn the volume up or down. Uh, this is great if you have a pair of headphones that does not have volume controls built in, uh, rather than having to pull out your phone and change the volume from there. Go ahead and pause it here. And then to go back uh, to the home screen, simply press the digital crown. Next, let's take a look at activity. Now, earlier we looked at a few settings to change uh, with regards to activity and how many notifications you want coming in. Uh, but if you, have the uh, if you have the complication set up for it, you can simply enter it here by pressing the bottom right of the display. If you don't have a complication for activity in the home screen, this is the icon you're gonna to want to look for, uh, these three rings. And these three rings are made up of move, which is the red ring, exercise, which is the green, and then stand, which is the blue. And these will gradually fill out throughout the day. Uh, and I really enjoy using this as I find this to be super motivating throughout the day, uh, as naturally you're gonna want to fill those rings as much as you can. And just having that visual indicator, uh, not just in the app, but especially as a complication here on the uh, watch face, just reminds me every time I check the time, okay, I still need to go for a good walk or so uh, to make sure I fill the rings for today. Speaking of moving uh, and working out, let's take a quick look at the workout app. And that's this little app right here uh, with the running man as the icon. And this will allow us to quickly cycle between all the different workouts. Now with watchOS 9, Apple have added even more different workouts that pair really well uh, with the Apple Watch. Uh, but let's go ahead and start off simple here. Let's do an indoor walk. We'll go ahead and tap that. As you can see, it will give us a countdown and will then automatically start the workout. And it will show us that most essential information, uh, of course, still seeing the time, but then also seeing how long you've been walking for your heart rate, uh, as well as your burnt calories. And then to stop the workout, we'll go ahead and simply swipe to the left here, end it or pause it if we like as well. So let's go ahead and end that and it will then add it to our daily activity uh, readings. A simple but useful app on the Apple Watch is the weather app. I find myself using this often, uh, especially before leaving the home to see if I need to bring an umbrella, uh, which here in the UK is more often than not, uh, or to see the temperatures, as of course these do change all the time. So here you can see the uh, hour breakdown uh, for the temperatures. We also have your week overview and we have your list view here as well. Now this will import the uh, data that you have on your iPhones. So if you have any locations already set up there, these will automatically sync over to your Apple Watch. And next, let's take a quick look at the calculator app. It's really useful to just have a uh, simple calculator right on your wrist. Uh, one of the features I like in particular is the tip feature. So let's go ahead and say uh, I'm having a meal with some friends and uh, let's go ahead and say the bill is $100. Uh, go ahead and select the tip here. We can choose the percentage to tip. So let's go ahead and change that. Uh, let's say 15%, I don't know, uh, number of people. Let's do two people. And then there you go. That will show you how much each, per each person would have to pay, including the tip. A nice little built-in feature. And then let's check out the Heart app. Now the Heart app is really cool uh, as of course it gives you that real-time heart rate data. Now at the moment here it's not going to be able to measure as I'm not wearing it on my wrist, uh, but what it will give you is your average resting heart rate, 
your walking heart rate. And we can go ahead and also tap into this to expand. You can see we have your uh, graphs as well. This is great to see what your peaks and lows are uh, and at what times of the day you were there. So if say you say, oh, my heart rate was really high uh, between, I don't know, 12 and 1 p.m. Uh, oh, right, because that's, uh, that's when I was doing a workout, for example. Something I find myself using a lot is voice memos. Now, having the Apple Watch right on your wrist makes it super easy to get a clear recording of, for example, a meeting uh, or a lecture at university, as you don't have to worry about putting your phone on a table or having you know, bad quality recording from your pocket, as you just have it on your wrist. It's a great way, again, to listen back to that presentation that you've done or, say, uh, that lecture that you may uh, want to take notes on again, for example. Just great to have this right on your watch. Uh, your voice memos can be played back right on the Apple Watch and will be stored on your iPhone. Here in London, I love using Apple Pay. Now to activate Apple Pay, we're gonna double click the side button. And as you can see, this will bring up all of your installed cards from your iPhone. Uh, you can choose whichever cards you want to carry over in the setup process. But what this means is all you have to do is double click that side button and then simply choose the card that you want to pay with and then pay. Now here in London, uh, I use it for public transportation, for groceries, my morning coffee, everything in between. Uh, it is just so convenient to just be able to pay with your Apple Watch. Uh, it is also much safer as of course, if someone were to steal or you lose your Apple Watch, they wouldn't be able to use Apple Pay without first authenticating uh, with your password, which again, we've set up to erase itself after 10 failed attempts. And this of course includes all of your card data. And this brings us to messages. Now the messages apps on uh, the messaging app on the Apple Watch uh, is really great, not just to see your notifications, so see which messages come in and have a quick read at them or a glance if you want to say uh, before properly responding, but it also does allow you to respond to your messages. So not only can we scroll through the messages, as you can see, Apple really scales the text really well uh, to a point where even on a small display like this, it is highly readable. Uh, but there's multiple ways to respond. Now on the SE2, or the SE for that matter, we have a few uh, suggested automatic responses, or you can also scribble, and this will allow you to use uh, one letter at a time to quickly uh, add a letter. Now this may take a little while, so my favorite way to respond is actually by dictating text. Great, I will see you soon. And there we go. As you can see, it's just added that line there and we can go ahead and press send to send that message. Uh, alternatively, we can also use different emojis. Of course, we'll have your uh, most frequently used ones here at the top and we can go and scroll through all the different categories. So not only can you read and preview your messages on the Apple Watch, uh, you can also respond to them. Now, if you do have the Apple Watch Series uh, 6, or sorry, the Series 7 or 8, you do have a built-in on-screen keyboard. This is great to have. I can't show you this here as this is not available on the SE2, but if you have one of those newer models, uh, I definitely suggest you using that to quickly type out a line or two of text. Speaking of text and communications, this brings us to the phone app. So we're gonna go and scroll through here, and here we can actually start a call right on the Apple Watch, as of course it does have a built-in microphone and speaker, so you can answer and take a call right on the watch. Uh, if you're in a more quiet environment, let's say at home and you are multitasking, uh, you're doing something else, I find this to be really quite nice. Uh, the other person can hear me clearly on the phone uh, and I can hear them well as the speaker gets loud enough. Now, one of the common misconceptions uh, about the Apple Watch is people think that you need the cellular model to make calls or send and receive messages. This is not true. The GPS only model can do these same features as well. The only difference is that you need to have your phone nearby. But as long as you have your phone nearby, all of these options are available on the non-cellular model as well. Uh, the only difference is that the cellular model can of course do this independently without your phone, but does come with an extra uh, monthly charge, which I don't recommend getting if you, uh, if you never leave the home without your phone, like I do. But if you do, then you may want to consider it. But I think for most people, uh, the GPS only version will be just fine. And then finally guys, to shut down the watch, we're gonna press and hold the side button, and this will bring us the medical ID, the compass backtrack, as well as the emergency options. Go ahead and tap the power button here and slide to power off the watch. All right, guys, that was a long video. Uh, congratulations if you've made it to the end. All of this should give you a good idea on how to set up, optimize, and use your new Apple Watch. For me, the Apple Watch has become a necessary uh, accessory that I really can't imagine a day without. Uh, I really enjoy it for the finer features such as Apple Pay, Maps, receiving notifications, and Siri, all the things that we went through. Uh, and this ultimately really creates a product that I enjoy using every day. 
But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did make it to the end, be sure to let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Or if you have any questions about the Apple Watch SE2 or any Apple Watch for that matter, please leave them down below and I'll do my best to respond to as many as possible. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you haven't seen them yet, I highly recommend watching my Apple Watch SE2 review or my Apple Watch Series A review if you're not sure about which model to get. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.